The new 2020 version of the Dell XPS 13 9300 is a fantastic computer. You see here the intro for the start in the market from Dell. And uh, I decided for the 1065G7 Core i7 10th generation Intel processor. It's a very nice computer, very small, very lightweight, fantastic battery power and fit for purpose for me. People following me on my channel know that I own the Razer Blade 15 2019 model, but that one has been donated to my brother-in-law who is a hard-coded gamer. And I needed now a side to my MacBook Pro 16 inch and 13 inch another Windows computer. And I decided for the Dell XPS 13 9300, which is the 2020 model. So the brand new XPS 13, which is further developed by Dell. And Dell has fantastic online documentation. I think this is the only manufacturer, at least up to my knowledge, which has documented every single detail of the way these laptops are built. And the document you need to look for is called the service manual on the download section on the Dell website. And then you find details on every tiny little thing you might want to know. And for instance, let's go on the screw list here. And then you find even photos of all the screws which are built into this laptop which is absolutely fantastic. So for instance, if you want to know how the base cover is assembled, you just find here that you need a Torx 5 screwdriver to actually get the screws unmounted and then remove the bottom plate. Or if you want to know what screw is used for the SSD socket, you find it here in a picture and you see exactly what kind of screwdriver you need to actually get the bottom plate removed. And in general, in the manual, you have all the different photos and what they also do what i find very clever is if they want to get your focus or attention to something like here the battery connector to the main board you see everything else is grayed out so you clearly see here what you need to focus on and what the specific part is you want to pay attention to so pretty helpful and good if you want to upgrade your laptop so i got my dell xps 13 some weeks ago and uh, I was quite curious to see it. And first of all, what you see is there is a very fancy box. It's wrapped into some paper and uh, getting the box out, you see that they really upgraded the way they ship these kind of laptops. Pretty nice package, I should say, and uh, pretty fancy. So if you open the box, you find the laptop itself. And uh, I think uh, it's a beautiful build. Let's uh, see if we open this up here and get the plastic removed to see uh, the cases of the laptop. Spilled from aluminum as you saw in the trailer to this video and is the XPS. It's the XPS 13 has Windows 10 Professional pre-installed and of course all the drivers you need for the laptop. Very nice build quality. And in the box you find a very small charger and that's very convenient because it's pointless to have a large and heavy charger if you have a small laptop because then you still have to carry a lot of stuff. You have some manual here and uh, again in terms of manuals I think Dell is an absolute role model. They do everything in color. It's nicely explained so even people not familiar with these kind of laptops will get along with the manuals very quickly and then online you find a lot of additional stuff. You have an adapter here from USB-C to USB 3.1a which is also useful because people still have, you know, certain additional accessories which they need on USB. And of course the cable connector to your power plug. So all good. So the next step is if you want to upgrade the SSD to get a recovery drive. And uh, first of all, you need to plug in a USB stick into the Dell XPS 13 and you need to format it. And there is one trick which I pointed out on another video on the Razer Blade 15 more than a year ago. The first formatting do it at NTFS and you can checkbox the quick format here that will speed it up. You can rename it if you want but doesn't play a role because later on the recovery procedure will give the stick its own name and so no matter what you plug in here it will be called recovery later on. And then the formatting process is taking a few minutes depending on the speed of your USB stick but in general will be ended after a few minutes. And then you have an empty USB stick, which you can use to become your recovery drive. 
So next you can close that window. You don't need that finder window any longer. And uh, you might want to type in via the start menu recovery, but then you get all kinds of entries, which is not what you're looking for. And uh, you will not find in this way the create the recovery drive procedure. So what you have to type in actually is create. And if you fill in create in the search field, you get immediately create a recovery drive, which is what you want. And uh, then another window pops up where it says backup system files to the recovery drive. So you push next and then it starts to kick off the process, which I'm going to accelerate here now because it's tedious to wait so long. And then finally, when uh, the first part of the procedure is done, you can select your USB stick. I have only one in my USB port, so we can go to the next step. And it says everything on the drive will be deleted. So you formatted it before anyway, and you should have made sure that there's nothing on that drive you need. And then the procedure starts, which takes a long time. Don't get me wrong, but this is not done in typically in five minutes because it's backing up the full Windows 10 operating system as well as all drivers you need for later on getting the display functioning, getting the graphic chip functioning, getting all the things installed which a laptop needs in terms of drivers. So you need to be a bit patient here. When the process is done, you can remove the stick. Now I should say when we open now the Dell XPS 13, everything you do from here on is at your own risk and your own responsibility. I do not take responsibility for any damage you are doing to your laptop. So it's good if you would have some experience. I'm currently here removing all the Torx 5 screws, which I mentioned before in the service manual. And now you have to remove the bottom plate and there are different tools you can use for that. Never use a screwdriver because that will completely damage the casses of the computer. Use something like that blue plastic tool I have here because it's not damaging the case and uh, will help you to remove the bottom plate, which can be kind of a rough procedure. So removing the bottom plate, we have a first glimpse inside the laptop. And looking at the bottom plate, my one, as you saw, freshly out of the box, but still has some writings on it. That can happen, you know, the manufacturer is free to do that if they want. And looking inside, first of all, here is the huge battery pack. That laptop has a lot of power reserves. And here's the battery connector to the main board, which I showed before in that manual. And by the way, make sure you are not electrically charged on your body, because if you touch something, it can damage the electrical components of the laptop. So be very careful. There's a reason why there is a stripe on top of it. Here's the SSD under a cover plate. And we also saw in the service manual what screwdriver we need to remove this, which is what I'm doing now. So it's good to be prepared and have all the components and tools you need in place. Now let's remove that screw. And by the way, if you want to be on the safe side, remove the battery connector before, just to make sure there is no charge in the laptop. So now we have this plate here and you see there is some cable on uh, the cover of the SSD, which you need to remove in order to be able to rotate it away and do not pull it up. Do rotate it to the side as I do it here, because if you pull it up, you will break that component and that screw, which is holding the cover. So pulling out the SSD is then easy. And let's have a look at the SSD and pause the video for a moment to see the information written on the originally shipped SSD. First of all, this is a nice little SSD, one terabyte. You see this here on the writings on the SSD. And uh, also the type of the SSD is nicely mentioned here. And you need to make sure if you go for an upgrade that you get the right SSD in terms of type. So this is a PCIe NVMe. And that's, I think, a standard SSD, which you have in most laptops. It's the same type what you would use for a Razer Blade 15 or other laptops. You saw on the way how I removed the SSD that everything has to be done gentle. And I also used that blue plastic tool to lift the SSD up in order not to touch any contacts on the circuits. I typically place the originally shipped SSD, which has no private data from me stored in a box, place it in the box of the laptop. And when I ever sell it, I can plug in this original SSD, which contains no data from me, which is very convenient. Here's the new SSD I'm going to insert. It's a two terabyte SSD from Samsung. That's the one I want that has sufficient storage for me on my tiny little Windows laptop. And again, never touch the contacts here because that might damage the circuits built in that SSD. Then you need to plug it in. You need to find the socket and then 
push it in gently don't apply too much force here make sure it's safely secured in the slot and uh, better check it a double time that everything is safe and secured because if the ssd is not connected correctly here you might later have problems and you know have the risk of data loss or what have you so make sure it's securely fixed into that slot then you can put the cover plate again over the ssd you can plug in that cable into the slots here to make sure everything is as it was originally and uh, again make sure that cable is nicely stored in the cover plate and then you can basically screw the screw on again on the cover plate to make sure it's all secured and here again i think the most important word in doing these kind of procedures is gentle screw it and fix it but don't overdo it because you can break the screw or the main board below make sure everything is done in a gentle way and test it again you know but make sure you don't touch anything with your finger which is connected to an electric circuit then you can get the bottom plate on again and you can make sure at the very end that all the screws are nicely secured and fixed as i show it here and again make sure you don't overdo it and you might want to be in a position to remove these screws later on what i also check is here if everything is really firm and there are no let's say gaps on the cases here or the case of the computer so i check this i go 360 degrees around the laptop to make sure everything is in the way it was before i got my hands on this tiny little machine what you also should do is test with a gentle push on the bottom plate if there are no gaps and everything is locked in and firmly secured in the way it was before so now the laptop is back in one piece and I inserted my USB stick into the slot. Very important if you start to replay the recovery information onto this fresh SSD, make sure it's plugged into power because you never want to be in a situation where you lose power in a recovery process. That will severely damage the laptop and you might have to send it back to Dell in order to get it restored. So the laptop booted by now and uh, we need now to find the recovery drive which we plugged into the Dell XPS 13 and on the left hand side you see it's recognized so just click on it with the mouse and then the laptop will reboot from the recovery USB stick and will start the recovery process in the way it is intended. The boot process will take a while so don't become impatient don't switch your laptop off in between just give it time and I accelerate this here. It takes a while, don't get frustrated and just wait. Now you can choose the language here. So I'm typically going for English, that's my main language. You can choose your keyboard layout in order to match what's built in the hardware of your computer. This is alphabetically ordered and you just go on to see more keyboard layouts until you find the one you have. My one is Switzerland and the German keyboard in Switzerland, which needs me to scroll a while through these options here. And then we have it here, Swiss German, which I'm going to activate now in order to have the right keyboard layout. Then you choose recover from a drive because everything you need is on your USB stick. And uh, you can now decide, remove my files. Since I made everything freshly from start and clean, I just say here, fully clean the drive. And then we have a fresh start, which is useful in case you have some data on that drive, you might wanna go for the other option. And then it gives you some kinds of hints here. So make sure your PC is plugged in. That's what I mentioned before on power. And then you can push the recovery button. The laptop will recover, will install all drivers, everything you need to have it up and running. And basically your SSD upgrade process is finished. So I hope this video is useful for people who want to upgrade their SSD. If you liked that video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you are not a subscriber yet to my channel, subscribe and hit the bell to be notified. Thanks for watching, stay tuned on my content, see you soon on my channel and peace out.